Hey there, I'm Larry Joe Campbell, and it's my privilege to welcome you to Family Promise of the South Bay's Empty Bowls fundraiser. This is the eighth annual Empty Bowls event. I remember sitting in Sippel Hall at First Christian Church in Torrance, listening to Sherry Carew and others discuss ways to create this nonprofit entity that would become Family Promise of the South Bay. Amazing. Now, before I talk for a bit, I'm going to give you um, a moment to check out the silent auction, which is currently live. So let me set my watch and go check it out. You're going to check out, click, maybe there's some vacation rentals, stuff like that. Uh, and we're back. Okay. Hopefully you found some cool things and bid on them. This is, after all, a fundraiser. If I didn't give you enough time, just know it'll be going on throughout our time together. Okay. You know, my wife challenged me with an idea the other day, an idea she read in her daily devotional, and that is this. Our excess is meant for someone else. That's heavy. That's deep. And in some way, shape, or form, everyone watching this uh, believes it. Or you wouldn't be here. When we volunteer, when we teach, when we coach, when we cook, when we donate, uh, our excess of time, wisdom, and money is shared with our fellow brothers and sisters. The young man said to him, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. This idea of our excess is that it's meant for someone else can be challenging especially for this young man mentioned in Matthew who would safely have been considered a, um, a have, okay? I was considered a have not. When I was growing up in, in rural Northern Michigan, uh, there was a time when we were six house payments behind. I remember driving to the savings and loan um, in town and waiting in our Chevy Citation while my mom humbly made her way into someone's office and and begged them not to take our house. I remember trying to get my foot in the door in the acting business after undergrad, and uh, I was able to intern at a regional theater in Lansing. I was fortunate enough to get a paid uh, intern position, but at $100 a week and having student loans and other bills requiring my money's attention, I had to apply and get approval for food stamps. I needed a helping hand, and those hands became my well builders. My friend Jim told me a long time ago, Larry, when you drink from the well of your life, remember the well builders. Coach Tom Roy giving me rides home miles out of his way so that I could play high school football because my mom couldn't pick me up. I remember Steve Berglund pulling me into his office, challenging me to to audition for more roles in undergrad. I remember John Peaks, the artistic director of that regional theater, being very honest with me and telling me what I needed to hear, not, not what I wanted to hear when it came to the discipline of the arts. I remember Bob Saget coming out to Detroit and improvising with the cast of Second City and telling his managers, who then came out and signed two of us, paving my way to Los Angeles and the life I lead now. I've had the great pleasure of meeting Joe Ehrman, who is the subject of a, of a wonderful book. If you get a chance to read it, it's called The Season of Life, and the great impact he has had on my coaching philosophy when he told me that I need to be a man built for others. Throughout my life, I've been in need of a helping hand. And those I just mentioned are are just a few of the helping hands I've had. These are the hands of my well builders. Our excess is meant for someone else. It's not just heavy, it's not just deep. I, I believe it's also biblical. 
I recently finished reading the Bible. That was uh, my COVID project, I guess. I've always had my go-tos, the book of, the books of Samuel. I love uh, Matthew, Philippians, Jonah, James. But my wife Peggy inspired me to read the whole thing. And when I was done, there were two themes emerged, for me at least, two themes more than anything else. A, idolatry is bad. No, no like really bad. Nothing, no one, nobody zilch should come before our creator. Now that's when I've messed up a lot. And two, we are told over and over again to look out for the poor, the needy, the widows, the children, the oppressed, the traveler, the refugee, and the foreigner, the, dare I say, the have-nots. Over and over again, there's the famous verse in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 16, 49. Now this was the sin of Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. Now, this is a joyful occasion, and I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer here. Besides, giving of our excess isn't meant to be done out of duty or fear, but out of love and joy. That's what makes my well builders, my well builders. Not just the people I mentioned before, but, but others like Steve Feetz, Ted Oden, Jim Belushi, Courtney Thorne Smith, Rick Smith, Shannon Poach, my wife, and so many more. I'd like to think they didn't help me out out of a sense of obligation, but because they wanted to, because they love me. Who are your well builders? These families that have lived in our synagogues and churches, our temples, halls, and cathedrals, they have well builders too. Maybe, probably some of you. What a blessing. We've all needed someone, and that someone has added to our story. They've added to God's glory, not out of obligation, but out of hope and joy, and especially love. Well, this is probably a good time for you to check out the live auction again. Let me give some space for that by ending with a joke, okay? <clears throat> a couple, they were both 60 years old, been married for a very long time, and they were walking along Rat Beach, and the wife saw a bottle sitting there in the sand, and she said to her husband, yeah, why can't people throw things away? There's a garbage can right over there. Heck, it's Rat Beach. There are garbage cans everywhere. So she picked up the bottle, and poof, a genie pops out. And the genie said, I will grant you each a wish. And the wife said, ooh, oh, well, I've always wanted to sail the Mediterranean. Boom, they're on a 50-foot yacht overlooking the Greek Isles. The genie turns to the husband and says, what is your wish? And the husband thinks and he whispers to the genie, you know, I've always wanted a woman 30 years younger. Boom, he's 90 years old. We've got a great lineup for you this evening. We will be hearing from families of the program, uh, volunteers, and, and other partners of the organization. To start, uh, we will have a toast for our dinner. So, happy bidding, and as you drink from your well, remember your well builders. I love you.